Hey, what's going on? It's Caleb with Caleb's Corner, and we are here at the Dubliner, where Keith is going to show us how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Hey, 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 yeah. The bar I used to work back home called Chester Beatty's. Used to have a lot of good Guinness drinkers. On St. Patrick's Day in that bar, you'd be you'd be throwing out a lot of Guinness. There'd be just rows, and bartenders would be taking Guinness left, right, and center, you know? Okay, so this is the awesome thing about Guinness at the Dubliner. So let's say the tap runs out, and they need to get a new keg. They have one waiting in another cooler just for that. So you always get a perfect Guinness here. So to change the keg, we crack the lid. We take our Nice short line. You hear a click. What you want to do here is when you change the keg of Guinness, it's the same thing again, and you can use your light glass for this. <laughs> because you're just going to clear out the line of, see, you're going to clear out the line of the old Guinness until you start getting the new Guinness coming through. So one of the biggest aspects of pouring the perfect pint of Guinness is having the perfect setup. And here in the Dubliner, we have our keg located right below the tap in our cooler. We have a really short line, which just comes around here and then up into the tap here, which is only about a foot of line. So you don't have a lot of Guinness line in the tap. And every morning we come in, we pull off two pints of Guinness. So when the customer comes in, we're dropping the Guinness into a glass and it's fresh and it leads to the perfect point of Guinness. Okay guys, we're gonna pour the perfect Guinness. First thing you do is put the glass at a 45 degree angle, pull the tap back nice and slowly, and get that Guinness pouring. You can hear the nice little hiss of the Guinness. You're gonna straighten it up as it comes to almost three quarters full and stop it. And for all these bubbles on the top, what you wanna do is just kiss the spout off them and that'll get rid of them. You don't want bubbles on the top of your Guinness because it's not, it's not a pretty sight. A Guinness is a, a thing of pride for Ireland. It's noticed by its solid black body, its, its white head. It's a, it's a thing of beauty. You take time pouring it, you enjoy drinking it. You don't want it to look messy with bubbles. And I worked in a bar with a lot of good Guinness drinkers who've been drinking Guinness for a long, long time. And They'd hand you back a pint of Guinness if you, <laughs> if, you, if you handed them a pint of bubbles in it. They call them frog's eyes. So I got some good training on how to pull a Guinness. You know, I had some hard customers, but good customers. And you just know who you are. So yeah, it, and it just it looks well. I don't like getting a pint of Guinness that has bubbles on the top, but I like a pretty pint of Guinness, you know? And you're gonna sit and let the Guinness settle, which is, Pretty beautiful to watch if you have the time. There's been a lot of talk about how long it takes a Guinness to settle. You let it settle for about 119 seconds is the, I think is the given. You know, I was in a bar over here once and someone said that you can wait up to seven minutes, they said. They bragged that they knew how to pour the perfect Guinness and I was like, okay. He's like, so you wait seven minutes before? I was like, seven minutes? It's like, you will be shot in Ireland for waiting seven minutes to pour a Guinness. But it's, you can tell it by, as the, as the body gets darker. The rule of thumb is to wait till the body gets black on the point of Guinness. And when it does, you start the back pour. So as you can see, the, the point is pretty much solid black body at the moment. What you're gonna do then is pick it up and you're gonna back pour. And the whole deal of back pouring is you push the tap back it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna settle quicker, but it's gonna rise the, the head up, keeping it nice and foamy. You want to have a dome shape. The thing about the Guinness is, you're gonna have a dome at the end that it's kind of, not defying gravity, but it, it's coming up over the glass, and you know it's not just flat level with the glass, not pouring out over sides, but it still manages to rise above the lip of the glass, and, and that's what the back pour helps, just to rise the head up as it settles it, but the head doesn't move. And you're gonna get rid of those bubbles again. And then you're gonna sit the Guinness down. And you're gonna watch it take shape. 
I learned poor Guinness in a bar back home called Chester Beatties on the by two guys called Paul and Bobby Caprani and they they pretty much took a lot of pride in their Guinness and, and that's that's how I learned to take pride in it too. That those guys showed me how to pour the perfect Guinness, how to take the time. You know, all the customers there liked a good Guinness. They didn't like their heads too big, they didn't like bubbles in it. So you know, after years of doing that, you kinda have a sense of pride in your Guinness and working for those guys it it showed me that you know, Guinness is a nice thing to be able to hand across the bar and I love nothing more than working here on a Saturday night and you have guys come up to you and you hand them a Guinness and they're like, wow, you know, that's, that's nice or that's poured properly or even when I start to pour, I have customers will say, oh, someone that pours the proper Guinness, you know, so it, it's great then when it, when it ends up like that, you have a nice solid black body, you have the top of the point coming up over the glass, as John Keats said, a thing of beauty is a joy for him. That's a nice Guinness. And that's what you want. You want to have that dome effect on it. But you're not finished there. What you want to do next is drink the perfect Guinness the perfect way. So what you do is you take your Guinness and you never look down on a pint of Guinness. You always bring it up to you, slouch it, and then drink her up. Now that's the perfect Guinness. Yeah. Good job. And see the way it sticks to the glass? It shows that it's a good point of Guinness. That's what you want all the way down. I want to say hello to everybody in Chester Beatties and in Ireland and uh, to Bobby and Paul Caprani and pretty much thanks for the experience you've given me and uh, that's what got me here to show these Americans how to pull a perfect point of Guinness. So thanks lads. Well that's it for this episode of Caleb's Corner. Remember to get the perfect Guinness. Go see Keith at the Dubliner. <laughs>